Salvador Felipe Jacinto Dali was born at 845 on the morning of May 11, 1904, in the village of Figueras in northern Catalonia, Spain. Dali had a brother, three years older, who had died at the age of seven months. It was in his brother's memory that his distraught parents baptized him with the same first name. Dali was an active and curious child and already very convinced of his own grandiose destiny. He decided to become a painter. The Catalan countryside became the source of his first artistic inspirations. In 1917, at the age of 13, he enrolled in a drawing course at the local municipal art school. Dali's mother, Filipa, died in 1921, so it was his father and his sister Ana Maria who accompanied him to Madrid, where he attended the San Fernando Academy to study painting. This period of university studies was a determining factor in the blooming of Dali's genius. His stay in Madrid allowed him to take in all the developments in painting that followed Impressionism, but the lack of innovation of his teachers at the San Fernando Academy left him disappointed and led him to follow a solitary path inspired by the work of the Italian metaphysical school and Futurism. There was a radical change. Dali changed from timid to eccentric, from a hard-working student to a rebel. During the period 1926 to 1928, Dali painted a series of realist paintings influenced by Vermeer and mastered the technique that he was to use later in his surrealist compositions. In 1929, Dali discovered his love and muse. From then on, Gala was associated with Dali. They became a mystical couple, similar to Dante and Beatrice. Dali constantly associated her with his work, he signed many of his paintings, Gala Dali. He sang her praises in his poems and dedicated all his writings to her. Portrait of Lucia, 1918. This is one of the first portraits Dali painted. It depicts his nurse, Lucia Moncanu, as an old woman. She was hired by Dali's family to look after him and his sister. When this picture was painted, Lucia was taking care of their maternal grandmother, Anna. Dali says that he painted Lucia's portrait while he had tonsillitis, and she was hovering around him as she used to do when he was a child in order to tell him stories. The painting is a good example of Dali's impressionistic style, as in Old Man at Twilight, and numerous landscapes of the same period. The mastery of his touch the precision with which he has rendered the half-blind eyes of the old woman and the richness of color show what a keen eye the young painter had, even at the age of 14. Self-Portrait in the Studio, Kadake, 1919. Self-Portrait with the Neck of Raphael, 1920-1921. Here we see him at about the age of 17, at the top of the road that dominates all Cadaques and leads to the cove of Saboya. The village appears in the background, sparkling in the morning sunshine. Behind Dolly, we see what is nearly an island, Sortel, the estate of the Pichot. All Dolly's interest is turned to the atmosphere of the picture. For the sake of accuracy, he had to return to the scene every day at the exact hour when the sun hit the village, leaving the cliff in the foreground in the shadow where he placed himself. Then he worked on the likeness of himself in front of a mirror in his studio during the long, hot hours of the day. Lanner Beach in Cadaquez, 1921. Here, the artist has painted the Lanier Beach in front of the family home during the bathing hour. In the foreground, his family, his aunt, La Tieta, and his sister, Ana Maria, with some friends, the Sayeras. One of the family boats is still pulled up on the beach, awaiting the afternoon boat ride. 
This canvas should be classed in the period when Dali was using the pointillistic technique of Seurat. Back view of Cadaquez, 1921. Self-portrait, 1921. Portrait of my father, 1921. Portrait of my first cousin, 1923. Port Alguer, 1924. Still Life, 1924. Portrait of the artist's father, 1925. The imposing presence in this portrait reveals the strong personality of the notary Salvador Dali y Cusi, the artist's father. Dali has superbly portrayed the paternal authority against which, less than five years later, he was destined to revolt. He recounts that his father always intimidated him more than anyone else. This feeling is clearly shown by the pose of the sitter, the construction of the picture, the lighting, and the neo-realistic technique inspired by André Derain. The exactness of detail in this painting has the merit of bringing back memories from the time Dolly was painting the work. For example, the pipe held by his father in his left hand. Girl Standing at the Window, 1925. As a youth, Dolly did numerous portraits of his sister, Anna Maria, often painted on copper and very small in size. Many were simple studies of hair and a bare shoulder. This one, larger and on canvas, is considered one of the most beautiful. Salvador always painted her near a window. In Girl Standing at the Window, Ana Maria poses in the room on the first floor of the paternal home in Cadaquez, which Salvador used as a studio. Reclining Woman, 1926. This kind of composition first appeared in the middle of 1926, when Dolly was painting landscapes, portraits, still lifes, and cubist compositions at the same time. There are no more than six canvases done in this manner, in which one sees this type of ample female stretched out on the sand or on the rocks. These figures visibly show the influence of the works of Picasso from the period called neorealistic between 1920 and 1922. At the time, Dolly was intrigued with geometry, with regulative diagrams, and everything that related to the golden section. The complete structure of the subject radiates from the exact point of the intersection of the diagonals, found slightly below the navel, which is the optical center of the picture. Basket of Bread, 1926. Barcelonese Mannequin, 1927. In this large painting, painted in Figueras, the influence of the masters of Cubism is perfectly visible. The female figure was inspired by a young girl of Figueras, Ramonetta Mansalvace, who was very pretty and personified elegance, evoking for Dolly the memory of the mannequins and women of the world in Barcelona and Madrid. This is evident in the treatment of the feet and the shoes, especially the one in front. Attention must also be called to the appearance of the fish sex, a theme used frequently later on by surrealists. Harlequin 1927. Still Life by the Light of the Moon, 1927. Apparatus at Hand, 1927. Bird, 1928. Dali's bestiary broke loose from reality at the end of 1926 to become altogether fantastic during 1928, which marked a very important period of transition in the painter's work. 
Dolly was trying to transcribe his dreams, and he made use of the Mediterranean sand and gravel that he glued to the surfaces of the picture. The interesting thing in this bird is that with its side already monstrous, it carries in its entrails a thing which is a fetus, and instead of the fetus being that of a bird, it's a cat. The moon is there, as in many other canvases of this period. Unsatisfied Desires, 1928. This picture was painted in Cadaquez during the summer of 1928. It is one of the first pictures from the period when Dali used the gravel from the beach of Lanay as collage. These pictures, with the gravel and the cork floats, were the beginning of a series which Dali considered the most important before surrealism. Canvases which were practically white, with only a few ideographic signs and feathers glued on them. Inaugural Goose Flesh, 1928. Dolly gave this picture its title in 1964. Here, the diagonal construction is again used. The visible material in the picture would seem to place it with the works painted in 1927, such as Blood is Sweeter Than Honey. The composition is already the product of a hypnagogic image, similar to that which Dolly repeated often in his surrealist works, little rod-like cells in suspension above an oblong object. The numbering in the picture probably corresponds to Dolly's unconscious interest in the metric system. The Ram, 1928. Benyuz, 1928. The Enigma of Desire, My Mother, My Mother, My Mother, 1929. This great composition, among the first of the Surrealist period, is one of the most important. Dali painted the Enigma of Desire in Figueres just as he was finishing the lugubrious game. In the Baroque appendage that elongates the visage, we understand the geological structures of the rocks of the region near Cape Cruz, eroded by the wind, mixed with fantastic architecture of Antonio Godi. The second part of the title, My Mother, My Mother, My Mother, was inspired by one of Tristan Zara's poems, The Great Lament of My Darkness. Dolly himself considered the enigma of desire to be one of his ten most important paintings. The little group on the left depicts Dolly himself embracing his father with a fish, a grasshopper, a dagger, and a lion's head. The Great Masturbator, 1929. The Invisible Man, 1929. Portrait of Paul Eloir, 1929. Accommodations of Desire, 1929. Illumined Pleasures, 1929. Imperial Monument to the Child Woman, 1929. Profanation of the Host, 1929. Invisible Sleeping Woman, Horse, Lion, 1930. This canvas is one of the early experiments with double images. The double image can be prolonged continuing the paranoic process, the existence of another obsessive idea being then sufficient to make a third image appear, and so forth, until the concurrence of a number of images limited only by the degree of the capacity for paranoid thought. The violently erotic character of the group of philators, metamorphosed into the forelegs and the head of the ensemble, is obtained with the help of an absence of dense shadows and violent colors, as well as by the geological character of the forms. Shades of Night Descending, 1931. The obsessive character of this work is made evident by one of the less important elements and the least noticed by the viewer, the measureless shadow which is spread out in the bottom part of the canvas. 
Its obsessional power is obtained by having in the center a rock whose shadow is much less dense than that of the one in the foreground. The shadow in the foreground is that of a concert grand piano, an instrument that holds a predominant place in many of Dali's surrealist compositions. The Persistence of Memory, 1931. The Old Age of William Tell, 1931. The Dream, 1931. Portraits of Gala, 1931. These two little portraits show Gala shortly after her meeting with Dolly. They were painted in oil, with an interval of a year between them. This one on an olive panel from Life in Port Liga, the other on a postcard with iridescent background. Gala is Dali's one and only inspiration. Her importance equals that of the most celebrated mistresses of the greatest men. The Average, Fine, and Invisible Harp, 1932. Portrait of the Viscountess Marie-Laure de Noailles, 1932. Diurnal Fantasies, 1932. The Invisible Man, 1932. Memory of the Child Woman, 1932. Gala and the Angels of Millet, immediately preceding the arrival of the conic anamorphosis, 1933. In the background, Gala, smiling, contemplates the scene. She is dressed in a richly embroidered jacket and is wearing a white cap with a transparent yellow-green visor, which was then in style. The seated figure facing her one hand placed on the table near a ball and a precariously balanced cube is easily recognizable. It is Lenin. On the left, the indiscreet mustachioed man eavesdropping behind the door is Maxime Gorky. On his head there is a lobster, a crustacean that the painter often places in equally anachronistic spots. The Angelus of Jean-Francois Millet is reproduced in this painting hung over the door. Soft Watches, 1933. The Enigma of William Tell, 1933. Average atmospherocephalic bureaucrat in the act of milking a cranial harp, 1933. Myself at the age of 10 when I was the grasshopper child, 1933. Enigmatic Elements in the Landscape, 1934. This composition is entirely imaginary, painted in Dolly's apartment in Paris. The artist at work, pictured in the foreground, seated in the front of his easel, is Vermeer of Delft, contemplating the wide plain of Amperdan. Farther back, one sees Dolly as a child in his sailor suit, holding his hoop and standing beside his nurse the type that he called Hitlerian nurses, much to the fury of the Surrealists. Still further back, two soft forms are coupled. They constitute part of that series of forms, erotic in character, used by Dolly in his Surrealist period, which he called symbols, morphological subcutaneous concretion, symbolic of hierarchies. Atavism at Twilight, 1933-34. The Weaning of Furniture, Nutrition, Detail, 1934. The Weaning of Furniture, Nutrition, 1934. Skull with its lyric appendage, leaning on a night table, which should have the exact temperature of a cardinal's nest, 1934. 
The Spectre of Sex Appeal, 1934. The Javanese Mannequin, 1934. Meditation on the Harp, 1934. Persistence of Fair Weather, 1934. Surrealist Poster, 1934. The Angelus of Gala, 1935. Puzzle of Autumn, 1935. Geological Justice, 1936. Geological Justice was painted on a wooden panel in Port Liga. This painting is a wonderful mixture of earth, beach, sea waves, wind, gulf, and familiar coast. All of this inspired by a fleeting and limited vision from the accumulation of moments lived, but with an exceptional change of size. It depicts a sort of landscape figure stretched out on the ground, two arms crushed and open, placed in surroundings like the immense beach at Rosas, very obvious on an infinite stretch of shore. The rocks in the background are probably those near Bagur with the little Medas Islands. It's the sea, but everything blends with the earth. Sun Table, 1936. When Dali painted this composition, he did not know why he put a camel in with all the other elements, which belonged to catechids. Later, he explained the premonitional character of this image by pointing out the package of camel cigarettes placed at the feet of the silhouette of the young boy. The table in the middle of the picture is a table from the Café Le Casino in Cadiquez, on which are placed one duro and three glasses, in which today is still served tala, the Catalonian coffee with cream. The tiled floor is what was being put in Dali's kitchen at the time that he was painting this picture. Night and Day Clothes, 1936. The interesting part of this creation stems from the idea that Dali imagined during winter sports, with snow plainly visible, an outfit that suggests sunbathing, since one can easily discover four openings by rolling up a sort of shade in order to expose the body. Here we don't know at exactly what moment the outfit becomes skin, covering, coat, indeed even a closet, a cupboard, or a window. Since this tunic dress has a front zipper and can at the same time be opened wide by turning the cremon bolt which is pictured on it. The Great Paranoiac, 1936. Soft construction with boiled beans, premonition of civil war, 1936. Autumn Cannibalism, 1936. Three young surrealist women holding in their arms the skins of an orchestra, 1936. The Man with the Head of Blue Hortensias, 1936. Morphological Echo, 1936. Morphological Echo, 1934-36. Spain, 1936-38. The figure of the woman leaning her elbow on a nightstand symbolizes the Spanish Civil War. The torso and the face of the female figure are made up of groups of Renaissance warriors, of condottieri, inspired by a combat of horsemen done by Leonardo da Vinci. The other very remarkable works of this series are The Great Paranoiac, Paranoia, Perspectives, and Head of a Woman Having the Form of a Battle, all exhibited together in a one-man show in February 1939. Metamorphosis of Narcissus, 1937. Perspectives, 1937. 
Palladio's Thalia Corridor, 1938. In this painting, named for the Italian architect Palladio, the Mannerist and Baroque influences are obvious. Mannerism in the figures with elongated shapes, Baroque in the postures, the movements, the light, treated in the style of Magnesco. The proportions of the trompe l'oeil architectural scenery of the Olympic Theater at Vincenza have been adopted by Dali. For the scenery, he has substituted rows of human figures, which, by the shortened perspectives, suggest great depth. The little girl who is seen running in the sun at the end of the corridor formed by the figures appears several times in the pictures of the Surrealist period. The Endless Enigma, 1938. In this composition, Dali is not satisfied with pursuing a double image, but succeeds in accumulating and making rise simultaneously, or one after another according to the particular capacity of the viewer, six different subjects, thus justifying the title The Endless Enigma. The subjects are in succession a reclining philosopher, a greyhound lying down, a mythological beast, the face of the great Cyclopean, a mandolin, a compotier of fruits and figs on a table, and finally a woman seen from the back mending a sail. One can perceive here, besides appearing in the corner at the right, the upper part of Gala's face with a turban on her head, and at the bottom left, balanced on a stick, the skeletal remains of a grilled sardine. Impressions of Africa, 1938. Enchanted Beach with Three Fluid Graces, 1938. Philosopher Illuminated by the Light of the Moon and the Setting Sun, 1939. The figure in this painting is the result as much of Dali's being fed up with the Surrealists as of his regrets at not being able to return to Port Liga because of the Spanish Civil War, which was not yet over. The reclining man is inspired by all the fishermen of Port Liga. All the ancestral Mediterranean wisdom contained in the figures painted in this canvas show that at the bottom, Dali was never profoundly influenced or completely assimilated by the Parisian Surrealist group. By placing the painting in juxtaposition with a passage from The Secret Life, one may better understand its meaning. Mad Tristan, 1939. Two Pieces of Bread Expressing the Sentiment of Love, 1940. This beautiful still life, depicting three slices of bread, a few crumbs, and a chess paw, is a remarkable example of the way in which Dali succeeds in adding an epic dimension to the most ordinary of everyday things. One day, after playing chess with Gala, one of the pawns remained placed in the middle of the model of Dali's still life. Here it is depicted in the center of the composition, flanked by two pieces of bread. His aim was to retrieve the lost technique of the painters of the past, to succeed in depicting the immobility of the pre-explosive object. The Visage of War, 1940. This painting was done in California at the end of the year in 1940. The horrible face of war, its eyes filled with infinite death, was much more a reminiscence of the Spanish Civil War than of the Second World War, which at the time had not yet provided a cortege of frightful images capable of impressing Dali. The horror of this picture is further increased by the brown tonalities which dominate its atmosphere. This is the only work where one can see the true imprint of Dali's hand on the canvas at the lower right. Slave Market with the Disappearing Bust of Voltaire, 1940. Slave Market with the Disappearing Bust of Voltaire, Detail, 1940. Family of Marsupial Centaurs, 1940. Daddy Long Legs of the Evening, Hope, 1940. 
Old Age, Adolescence, Infancy, The Three Ages, 1940. Invisible Bust of Voltaire, 1941. The concept of a still life placed in front of an architectural structure through which one glimpses a fragment of the landscape is one that Dolly has made use of frequently to show advantage the bust of Voltaire by the sculptor Houdon, which disappears to give place to a group of people. This work was done in the United States, subsequent to another picture called Slave Market with Disappearing Bust of Voltaire. Dolly's double image of the bust of Voltaire by Houdon has been used many times in various works and publications to illustrate the time-space concept. Design of interior decoration for a stable, library, 1942. The Poetry of America, 1943. Here, the Delinean doctrine has been successfully applied to transcribe obsessive images, fruit of the years of exile Dali and Gala spent in America during World War II. American dynamism is represented by the two principal figures, football players, and by the little character posed on the appendage in the back of the one at the left. He is balancing a ball on his finger and symbolizes the physical vitality of Negroes. In this work, Dolly has expressed his premonition of the difficulties which would arise between black and white citizens after the war by painting a soft map of Africa hanging from the clock in the back. As far as he is concerned, the Coca-Cola bottle is also premonitory. He painted the bottle with photographic meticulousness nearly 20 years before Andy Warhol and the American pop artists started to do the same thing. Geopoliticus Child Watching the Birth of the New Man, 1943. Giant Flying Demitas with Incomprehensible Appendage 5 Meters Long, 1944-45. In this landscape, because of Dali's years of exile, the atmosphere and the light of catechese have become indistinct and replaced by lighting that gives an almost abstract and very imaginary character to the rock La Rata, the rat, which rises from the sea off Cape Creus. The entire construction of the picture hinges on the development of a rigorous logarithmic spiral whose starting point is placed on the handle of the cup. Tristan and Isolde, 1944. The figures of Tristan and Isolde depicted on this canvas were painted by Dolly in 1944 as a backdrop for the ballet Bacchanal, performed to Wagner's music and presented for the first time in 1944 on the stage of the International Theater of New York. The tale of this ballet, for which Dolly wrote the libretto, began before the war. The ballet is favorable ground for Dali to put his paranoic critical method into practice with good results. One second before awakening from a dream caused by the flight of a bee around a pomegranate, 1944. Gallerina, 1944-45. This portrait belongs to the artist's classical period. He named this painting Gallerina because Gala was for him what La Fornarina was to Raphael. And without premeditation, here is the bread again. A rigorous and precipitous analysis brings to light the resemblance of Gala's crossed arms with the sides of the basket of bread, her breast seeming to be the extremity of the crust. In 1945, Dolly wrote about this portrait. Today, now that Gala has risen in the heraldic hierarchy of my nobility, she has become my basket of bread. The bracelet she is wearing on her wrist was a Fabergé creation of mogul inspiration that Dali liked immensely. Three Apparitions on the Visage of Gala, 1945. Basket of Bread, 1945. 
Apotheosis of Homer, Diurnal Dream of Gala, 1945. The Broken Bridge of the Dream, 1945. The Temptation of St. Anthony, 1946. In this picture, temptation appears to St. Anthony successively in the form of a horse in the foreground, representing strength, sometimes also the symbol of voluptuousness, and in the form of the elephant which follows it, carrying on its back the golden cup of lust in which a nude woman is standing precariously balanced on the fragile pedestal, a figure which emphasizes the erotic character of the composition. The other elephants are carrying buildings on their backs. The first of these is an obelisk inspired by that of Bernini in Rome. The second and third are burdened with Venetian edifices in the style of Palladio. In the background, another elephant carries a tall tower, which is not without phallic overtones, and in the clouds, one can glimpse a few fragments of the escorial, symbol of temporal and spiritual order. Portrait of Picasso, 1947. Dali painted the portrait of his genial compatriot in California. Dali has assembled here all the folkloric elements that anecdotally depict the origins of the Andalusian painter. His renown is affirmed by his bust mounted on a pedestal, symbol of official consecration. The breasts depict Picasso's nutritious aspect, while he carries on his head the heavy rock of the responsibility for the influence of his work on contemporary painting. The face itself is a mixture of a goat hoof and the headdress of the Greco-Iberian marble bust, the Lady of Elche, which brings to mind the Andalusian and Malagan origins of Picasso. The Iberian folklore is finished off with a carnation, a jasmine flower, and the guitar. Study of the Leda Atomica, 1948. The Madonna of Port Liga, 1950. This immense canvas, one of Dali's most famous, marks the beginning of a new period in his work. At the same time, it is the first picture so large, it is the first of the religious paintings, and it heralds the corpuscular epoch. The whole composition is arranged around the Eucharistic bread, visible through a hole in the center of Jesus' body, the point of intersection of the diagonal lines indicating the middle of the painting. Gala is depicted as the Virgin and also as the cuttlefish angels on the right side of the canvas. A little boy of Catechez named Juan Figueras was used as the model for the infant Jesus. Christ of St. John of the Cross, 1951. By far the most popular of all of Dali's religious works is without a doubt his Christ of St. John of the Cross, whose figure dominates the Bay of Port Liga. The painting was inspired by a drawing done by St. John of the Cross himself after he had seen this vision of Christ during an ecstasy. When he saw the Christ drawn by St. John of the Cross, Dali worked out geometrically a triangle and a circle, which aesthetically summarized all his previous experiments, and he inscribed his Christ in this triangle. The people beside the boat are derived from a picture by Le Nain and from a drawing by Velázquez for the surrender of Breda. Raphaelesque Head Exploding, 1951. Assumpta Corpuscularia Lapis Lazulina, 1952. Rhinocerotic figure of Phidias's Elisos, 1954. Painted during Dali's corpuscular period, this is one of the pictures in which the artist used rhinoceros's horns in suspension to form a part or the entire figure of his subject. The mythological figure is depicted in suspension in the middle of the Bay of Cadaquez, where one glimpses in the background the rock called Kurukuruk, which stands at the entrance of the bay. The underpart of the water is treated the same as in two other paintings, 
the first from 1950 and the second from 1963. Dolly managed to overcome his fear of undertaking certain surfaces of this canvas by attacking two completely different things, the torso and the testicles of Elisos. Landscape of Port Liga with homely angels and fishermen. Crucifixion, Corpus Hypercubus, 1954. This painting may be regarded as one of the most significant of his religious oils in the classical style. Metaphysical, transcendent cubism is the way that Dolly defines his picture. The cross is formed by an octahedral hypercube. The extremely noble figure of Gala is the perfect union of the development of the hypercubic octahedron on the human level of the cube. She is depicted in front of the Bay of Port Liga. Noon, Barracks at Port Liga, 1954. Young Virgin auto sodomized by her own chastity, 1954. Paranoiac critical study of Vermeer's Lacemaker, 1955. The Last Supper, 1955. Saint Surrounded by Three Pie Messons, 1956. Nature Morte Vivante, 1956. Saint Helena of Port Liga, 1956. Eggs on the Plate Without the Plate, 1932. St. John, 1957. Santiago El Grande, Detail, 1957. Portrait of Chester Dale and his dog Coco, 1958. Velázquez painting the Infanta Margarita with the lights and shadows of his own glory, 1958. Discovery of America by Christopher Columbus, 1959. The discovery of America by Christopher Columbus was a major step in Dali's painting of that period. Here one finds for the first time brought together and intimately mixed with previous styles, the technique of his corpuscular period. In this canvas, the figure on the banner is Gala, and the monk kneeling and holding the crucifix is Dolly. He employed a process utilizing the lines of the photo engraver, which, greatly enlarged, would allow the image, taken from the Christ of Glasgow, to reappear so that it would seem to mingle with the glorious halberds of the Spanish warriors. San Salvador and Antonio Godi fighting for the crown of the Virgin, 1960. Hyperzoological Sky, 1960. The Apocalypse of St. John, 1960. The Servant of the Disciples at Emmaus, 1960. Gala Nude from Behind, 1960. The Ecumenical Council, 1960. The Hallucinogenic Toreador, 1968-70. The double image appearing in the center of this work is that of the Venus of Milo, repeated several times from different angles in such a way that the shadows form the features of a toreador, whose coat of lights is made up of corpuscles obtained through the multiplication of dots and of flies, mingled with the corpuscular image of the dying bull. It was in the Venus of Milo, reproduced on the cover of a pencil box, that Dali saw the face of a toreador appear. The architecture of the arena lighted by the shadows of the sun at five o'clock in the afternoon, 
the hour of the bullfight, is a mixture of classical Spanish arenas with Palladian structures seen in Italy and the porticos in the old ruined theaters in Figueras before it was transformed in the Teatro Museo Dali. Daughter of the west wind, to the east wind was wed, when to see her returned, crying to his bed. 1972. Dolly from the back, painting Gala from the back, eternized by six virtual corneas provisionally reflected by six real mirrors, unfinished, 1972-73. Experimenting with stereoscopy, Dolly started with stereoscopic documents. He painted two canvases, one for the left eye, the other for the right eye. These appeared to be in three dimensions with the help of a system of mirrors. This color plate shows the painting for the right eye, faithfully copied by Dolly from the stereoscopic photograph in black and white. All the painter's work turned toward the study of the variations of colors, values, and the rendering of the lights and shadows from one canvas to the other in order to achieve a three-dimensional effect and to offer a new stereoscopic binocular vision, thanks to the optical superimposing of his two paintings. On June 10, 1982, Gala died, and with her disappeared the surrealistically extravagant Dolly. In the month of May, 1983, Dolly painted his last canvas, The Swallow's Tale, a work inspired by the theory of catastrophes. <laughs>